And so, Sarah told Abraham, is it, I'm going childless, but we have a law that I can give you my servant girl. She gets pregnant for, for you, gives birth to a child. That child becomes my child. So let me have child or children by Hagar. And Hagar became pregnant. And then no, a servant girl now. She's not pregnant for Hagar. She became pompous. And Sarah dealt with her harshly. At the time she ran away because of the harshness of Sarah on her. Sarah was very harsh. Very, very harsh. <laughs> then later, an angel of the Lord met her in the wilderness and told her to return back home and submit to Sarah. But the incident here is that Ishmael, our son, is now 13 years old. And Isaac has been born. Isaac was born when Ishmael was 13 years old. Then Abraham had a special feast, a winning feast. It's a ceremony that is done for infants, infants now, toddlers, those days when you are stopping them from sucking breast. They do a special feast for that. And so, <coughs> Ishmael maybe was outside playing ball while the feast was going on or somewhere playing or doing some other things. And we are told that Sarah saw the son of the born woman, as she's referred to here, mocking Isaac. Later in Galatians, Paul tells us that Ishmael persecuted Isaac. That means when someone is mocking you, that person is persecuting you. Mockery is persecution. And some Christian young people don't know that. When, when your friends are telling you, you are still a small boy, this is what we do, we booze, we do this, we do that. You are still small. They are mocking you that you are not doing the evil that they are doing with them and you are feeling, oh, am I really a boy? Am I really a man? Listen, they are persecuting you. You take that persecution gladly for the name of God, for the name of Christ. I don't want to go there today. So Ishmael mocked. Now, I believe personally, my own thinking, that there must be something about Isaac, his, maybe his physical appearance that made Ishmael to mock. Maybe his nose was too big. One ear was bigger than the other. I don't know. But it was, uh, there may have been something. I'm just assuming now. Uh, there may have been something about Isaac's physique that made Ishmael to mock. But the story goes on that when Sarah saw that in her harshness, she said, this woman and her son can't stay here. We are going to send her away with her son. We're going to send her away. <laughs> now, I want to observe very clearly because I'm going to mention this again. Is that this problem began with Sarah. Sarah created this problem. In short, Sarah, with the cooperation of Abraham, they are the ones who have created this problem. And that problem they have created is still haunted today. The Muslim religion came out of Ishmael. Christianity came out of Isaac. As you can see the conflict that some radical Muslims have against Christians up to today. Abraham was the one who created all this mess because of one mistake of pulling out of the path of faith to listen to his wife. The point I'm making here is that Hagar actually was not the one who created this problem. 
Everything originated from Sarah and Abraham. If there was no Ishmael, there would have been no mockery. If there was no mockery, Sarah would not have had opportunity to, to exhibit her harshness. And there would be no need for Abraham to be compared to have to send Ishmael away. At times, the circumstances people face in life is created by others. Common knowledge. What is happening in Nigeria today that Nigerians are dealing with is created by Nigerian leadership, by the government of Nigeria headed by Buhari. They are the ones. And so, but what do you do? Are you going to say, well, it's somebody that did this to me, so there's nothing I can do? No, you must deal with that circumstance. Some children are going through issues that their parents created, that, that their family members created. Are you going to say, oh, because my parents did this, my parents did that, they didn't send me to school, so I, I would not go to school? No. You must deal with that circumstance. Glory to Jesus. Amen. Must deal with it. Praise the Lord. Must deal with it. Whether it was your creation or somebody else's creation, it doesn't make any difference. The Bible says, in every temptation, see that temptation, see the uh, challenge as a temptation. In every challenge, God will provide a way of escape. He didn't qualify the challenge. Whether it, was, whether it came about because of your mistake or it came about because of what somebody did to you. He said, in every challenge that Yahweh will provide a way of escape. There's always a way of escape for you to reach to your dreams. No matter your position. There's always a way of escape. Glory to Jesus. And that way of escape is not an escape to go and to go and hide. No, is escape to victory. You didn't hear me. Escape to victory. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 